Hello and welcome to Piano and Keyboard Artist, where we discuss the artists related to pianos, keyboards and synthesizers. And continuing with my mini-series called 40 Years of Depeche Mode, this is part four. Oh, he's talking about Depeche Mode again. Yes, I do apologize. Is this a Depeche Mode channel? No, it's not, but you'd be forgiven for thinking that if you stumbled upon this channel for the first time. And if you have, stick around. And if you are one of those people who watches the videos but never subscribes, please hit the subscribe button. It will really help uh, with the, the statistics and the analytics and help help this channel break through uh, to the next level. Thank you so much to all of you who have been with me from the start. I really would be, I wouldn't be here without you. So jumping into today's episode, which is part four. And in part one, I did a video which was basically talking quite in depth about Depeche Mode quite generally. I'm very proud about the fact that this channel probably goes into more depth than any other YouTube channel regarding Depeche Mode, as far as I'm aware of. Um, and as much as I want to sort of deviate speaking onto about other subjects, which I will and I do, um, the Depeche Mode content always is very popular and I love talking about it. So in parts one, uh, we had a general chat about that. Uh, part two, I had an interview or a discussion with Gareth Jones, who I'm pleased to say is now a, a regular face on this channel, as is Brian Griffin. We're getting the whole sort of Depeche Mode family here, as is Peter Kerr, the guy who did the, the music videos for It's Called The Heart Stripped and what was the other one? Oh, of course, Shake The Disease. Uh, how could I forget? Duh. One of my all time favorite Depeche Mode songs. And also in part three, I did a, a chat on Zoom with some really hardcore and interesting Depeche Mode fans, uh, and I've got something interesting coming up after this episode, but let's jump into this episode right now. And I want to focus on the sound. What's that sound? I think is something we've often said when listening to Depeche Mode's music. What's that sound? What's that sound? What's that sound? Um. Now, if you're like me, you guys who've been on this channel for a while, you know my story. I was just a kid. I liked music. I wasn't really into it. I was more of a, a geek. I was more into airplanes and airwolf and things like that. And when I heard Enjoy the Silence for the first time, my life had never been has never been the same because it got me into music and down this path as a producer and a coach. And it's a long story. Um, so we all have our first... Uh, introduction to Depeche Mode and that is something we discuss on this channel a lot is how did you get introduced to their music and I love hearing the stories because although everyone's experience is very different there are such um, similarities in everyone's story. Speaking about Depeche Mode is kind of like peeling an onion it's layer after layer after layer and you know in my previous videos we've gone down such a deep rabbit hole um, regarding the songs the productions the structure and I've said there are so many reasons as to why this band are successful you know it's not smoke and mirrors there is incredible uh, complexity and intelligence and passion and enthusiasm in everything they do uh, coupled with great uh, management from you know from uh, Daniel Miller in the early days. But when you listen to Depeche Mode's music, it's a little bit like the lyric, When you think you've tried every road, every avenue, take one more look at what you found old, and in it you'll find something new. I often listen to Depeche Mode's music, as I'm sure you do, and uh, although I've listened to it for many years, I can often hear new things within it, just as Martin Gore said, when you think you've tried every road. Take one more look at what you found old, and in it you'll find something new. Well, that is so true about Depeche Mode's music. I can listen to music that I've been listening to for years, and I have studied their music for years, and I can always hear something new. And something that really has always intrigued me about this band is, you know, from the early days, was not only the great songs, but the, the, the use of sound, um, where you're often listening to a song, and, you know, a sound comes through, and you're like, what the hell was that, or how did they do that? And... 
I suppose if you're a producer like you know like myself or you got into music because of Depeche Mode you're going to listen to it in a more critical and analytical way. Now being a producer sometimes I find it kind of kills music for me not in a bad way but it's kind of like when I listened to music before I became a producer or got into music, I would hear it in a different way. Now, I still enjoy music. If not, I probably enjoy it more now. But if you're a producer, you will be able to, to relate to what I'm saying is you tend to listen to it in a, in a completely different way. It's like uh, a song will start and let's take Enjoy the Silence. And you'll the bum, 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 you'll hear that bass line. You'll be like, oh, what is that? Yeah, this, that was that the ARP 2600? Or, you know, you'll, you'll think about that and you'll, you'll hear the chords, the choir chords, and you'll be like, oh, are those the choir samples from the Korg M1? And then you'll hear the vocal come in, you'll be like, or you'll hear the guitar first, and you'll be like, hmm, what's that effect on the guitar? You know, you, you've, you have, and then, then the vocal comes in, you'll be like, oh, what's that effect on the voice? And oh, you so you're listening to it so ana analytically, you're almost not getting the emotion. But anyway, that's an, another subject. But with this video, I want to sort of talk about how it's very often quite intriguing when you listen to their music to think what is that sound but not only what is that sound but what is the origin of that sound now remember if we listen to let's just use a few examples that we take you know great electronic acts like pet shop boys you know the human league um there are many so don't shout at me if i don't give the whole list here um there are many erasure loads loads and loads and loads um but if you take someone like Erasure, for instance, when you listen to their songs, um, it's always very obvious when you hear a sound, you go, okay, that's a synthesized sound. It's a, it's a song from a synthesizer. It's a great sound, it's interesting, but it is from a synthesizer. If you're a producer, you will know where I'm going with this. But when you listen to Depeche Mode's music, very often, not so much in the first album, Speak and Spell, and probably not so much in the early albums, but certainly around about construction time again, you know, from the time Gareth Jones came on board, uh, you would often listen to songs and you'll be like, what the hell is that sound? What is the basis of that sound? Now, of course, logically, we know it is, you know, Depeche Mode or an ele electronic band. We know they use synthesizers. We, we know they use samplers. But the point I'm making is when you hear a sound, um, very often you'll hear a sound and you'll be like, okay, that's like a percussive sound. Um, it, it probably, it, it's metallic. They probably got that sound by someone hitting a, you know, hit, hitting a fence or, you know, smashing a, 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 a bottle or, you know, you know, whether it be sampling fireworks, you can always kind of hear what the, the, the origin of the sound is. And I'm going to run through some examples here, but very often it's not that clear cut. Um, and we're going to, I'm going to leave this to you at the end to leave your uh, examples in the description below. But if I can just think off the top of my head, uh, if I think of the beginning of People Are People, you've got that honka, 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 honka. Okay, that's not irritating, is it? Du -du 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 what the hell is that sound? You know, it's not clear as to how they've done it. Now, when we listen to sounds, of course, we're never going to be able to reverse engineer what they've done. But often, and I've you know, I've, this is how I did my trade. I analyzed many great artists and Depeche Mode is one of them. And I would try to reverse engineer their sounds. And, you know, if you're using, a, a, if you listen to um, a lot of their sounds, it, it, it's quite um, not obvious, but you might hear a sound and go, okay, uh, it sounds a little bit guitar-y. Uh, the origin of that is probably a guitar that's been put through a, you know, a distortion and then added to a synth and then downsampled and resampled and whatnot. But then there are those sounds like the beginning sound of people are people that honka, honka, honka. I said, what the hell is that sound? Um, there are loads of examples, but off the top of my head as well, um, I'm thinking of uh, the song, oh, one of my favorite Martin Gore songs, Put It On, Blue Dress. Now, just at the end of Blue Dress, it kind of, uh, blends into clean. It's got like that. I've got an early morning voice, forgive me. Um, and then it's got that. And then it's got those, that like sort of like harmonium sound with those voices. And then in between, you know, as it joins into clean, you get like this. this it sounds like ducks, like ducks. And it's got like the. 
got like these really weird atmospheric sounds and and my fellow uh, wingman and fellow geek Simon Forsyth who you guys know from the channel here who's a good friend of mine and a very in-depth geek and uh, him and I've been head scratching as to what the origins of a lot of those sounds are you see a sound like that in that example you can't even um, sort of pinpoint where where it came from more or less there are a lot of sounds of theirs that you listen to and you'd be like okay for instance the the, the pan pipe uh, sound in the in, in the song um, behind the wheel that do 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 it's got that pan pipe sound so you listen to that sound you go okay the origin of that it's, it's clearly a pan pipe type of sound um uh, and, and i can go into so much detail about each sound and i won't but if you listen to that pan pipe sound um it's got like a a very low um like kind of like a bass sound in it not a very low bass it's it, it's in the sort of like uh, uh, upper mid frequency, uh, but it's actually detuned to the original sort of uh, pan pipe sound, so it gives it this kind of discordant kind of feel. Um, you don't hear it, um, you hear it clearly in isolation, um, but in the mix you don't hear it, but you do, because if it was, if you took it away you'd notice it. And that's why I've always been very critical of uh, Depeche Mode's recent live setup, is because uh, I just feel that the attention to detail in their keyboard sounds is not there anymore another story. Coming back to Simon, of course, we were discussing these sounds and there's a lot of sounds we discuss. I love it when Simon's here, you know, we have a few drinks and we, we always end up talking about Depeche Mode. We are sad, aren't we? <laughs> and one of the sounds, and, and there are many, but one of the sounds that Simon was talking about was the lead sound in clean. It's that, um, obviously I'm just going to play it on the piano, yeah, it doesn't make sense in the piano, but it's that clean. It goes doo -doo -doo -doo, but it kind of bends um, and then us being the geeks we're trying to uh, decide how, how first of all what type of sound is that is it a synthesizer it probably is but more uh, fascinating about that particular sound was the the actual attack on the notes um, it didn't sort of have the sort of attack that is sort of like a uh, 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 conducive with a, a keyboard like you know, like a played sound and it's also very difficult to to hear if you know was it done in the guitar because the way it bends and please we can go down a rabbit hole with just that one song but there are many many examples and I'm going to invite you at the end of this video to leave your comments in the description below right and before we carry on guys there is no sponsor for this video but I would like to draw your attention to this fabulous offer Hi, I'm Brian Griffin and uh, I photographed those uh, first five album covers by Depeche Mode. Well, with uh, great demand for my artwork, I'm, I'm thrilled to share this offer with you. For the first time ever, my artwork is available to the masses for an affordable price. The complete collection of my artwork is now available at PornGeorge.com. Well, you can join the club of hundreds of satisfied devotees all over the world. These fabulous poster prints look great everywhere. Like it could be in your bedroom, could be in the kitchen, could be in your living room. In fact, anywhere.
Well, from the original negatives and the transparencies, these poster prints are absolutely the best you could find in the world. All the images are personally signed by me. Go on and treat yourself. These are the perfect gift for, for yourself or your friends or your family. I'm Brian Griffin and I'd like to welcome you to the Poster Print Club. This offer is exclusive to the Vaughan George channel and there is nowhere else you can get this anywhere else in the world. And it's a great way for you to support this channel and Brian Griffin's art. Thank you. Right, let's look at some practical examples. Let's take the song Strip, for example. If we take the lead, melodic, anthemic, pad, sound, whatever it is, that is played by Martin, which is... Iconic makes your neck hairs tingle. But you listen to that sound, for example, you can hear there's some kind of detuning in there. I am not going to, for a moment, say I know how they did that. This is a discussion channel, but one can speculate that's obviously, you know, whether they built it up from a, you know, from a sawtooth or a sine wave and then developed it and then added it to something else. Remember, the approaches were always very, very different. Um, watch the live Q&A I did with Gareth Jones last week. I will put a link in the description below. It was long, it was about three hours long. Um, I invited um, fans to come on and ask Gareth questions. And Gareth did say that Depeche Mode were incredibly intensely passionate and focused when they were young um, about everything. Yeah, you know, There was so much detail. And what was nice to hear Gareth talk about was Fletch because I know you know there's a lot of Fletch bashing that goes on you know and I have my little um, Fletch Files uh, series and of course it's, it's done in good faith I mean no disrespect by it um, but it was nice to hear Gareth saying that Fletch was very very um, intense or uh, passionate and enthusiastic about you know the, the way the, the you know, the overall sound of everything now and that might be quite funny to some people because he's not very musical I suppose and forgive the the analogy but it's a little bit like the Stock Aiken and Waterman thing where you had Matt Stock and Mike Aiken and then you had Pete Waterman um Pete Waterman wasn't a musician but he he was a DJ but he sort of had a he he knew when something sounded right sorry to talk about Stock Aiken and Waterman but there are many examples there are probably better examples I could have given but Fletch really was um passionate about the the, the sound and he was very vocal if he didn't like something so uh, uh also something that really made me laugh was Gareth said that um they were in the studio I don't know which I think it may have been the Black Celebration record and Fletch enthusiastically came running into the um into the control room and he said guys 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 or oh, let me do the voice hey guys guys you've got to come i found this sound come come with me to the men's gents and anyway so uh uh fletch took them all to their the, the men's bathroom and uh apparently it was the the aerosol uh i don't know if it was the aerosol spray or the sort of like um uh, dis dispenser tsh, tsh, that you know dispense the aer the the aerosol into the air. Anyway, that psh, psh, sound was a sound that Fletch found. They sampled that and they used it into one of their records. Now I should ask Gareth um, which song that was. In fact, let's try and figure out which song it was. Um, so that psh, sound from the men's bathroom from an aerosol can or or some kind of dispenser was used in a song, probably as a hi hat or something. It just points out the creativity of this band. But anyway, coming back to this Martin Gore sound, uh, or this sound that Martin plays. If I just sustain it, I can hear there's kind of like a looping. But there are different layers. It's It's got a... It's got a... It's got a... So it's, it's almost like it, there is detuning and stuff going on that sound. And... As I say, the origins of how they started it, whether they combined it with a preset, oh God, and, and manipulated that preset to the point that it was unrecognizable, 
um, and then combine it with layers of other stuff I don't know, but it is very fascinating. However, listening to that, I can tell that that is um, a synthesizer sound of some sort. You know, it's, it, 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 it's a pad, uh, what, we, what we'd call a pad these days. And I'm always fascinated, how did they come up with these sounds? Uh, another sound of the Martin uh, uh, stripped sound bank is... <laughs> If we just go, it's got a quick sort of like sustain, uh, there's no sustain, it's got a quick attack. It's got like a glassy kind of sound, uh, whatever that means to you. Yeah, we can just go down a rabbit hole here. But can you see what I mean here? It, it almost has like a, almost sounds like the, the initial pluck of an electric guitar. Is it? Is it not? And a lot of this is just mind-blowing and it's very, very geeky. But when you really get into this, and as I say, when I got these sounds in isolation for the first time, it was really like Christmas to a, to a child for me to actually try and, uh, you know, to try and reverse engineer these. And, and uh, you know, the deeper I go down this rabbit hole, uh, the more intrigued I am. Remaining on Stripped, if we move on to the Alan Wilder sound bank for Stripped, uh, you will find Alan... It's the same part. Now, apparently, um, him and Martin play that part in unison at the same time. Uh, Alan's is slightly different. Uh, Martin's has got more, more of like a glassy sound, whatever that means. And then Alan's is... Once again... There's some real real sort of layering and fine-tuning going in there. And as I say, within the context of the mix, it, it, it really shines. But of course, when you take it out of the mix, it, it's very fascinating to try and, you know, reverse engineer it. And on a sort of, uh, you know, this is like producer talk now. Um, when you listen to these sounds in isolation, they, they do sometimes sound a little bit thin. And that's not in, or a little bit reedy sometimes. But of course, if you're a, a producer, you know that sounds in isolation Sounds are not judged in isolation, they are judged within the context of a mix context of a mix. But I don't know. What do you think this is? What do you think the starting point of this is? Uh, also he has that. Now that to me is I could be wrong, but to me that sounds like a Qatar is in there somewhere. If you go, it's got that, but then it also has some kind of metallic kind of clank. It's got like a, it's got like a slap as well. If you strip these songs back, pardon the pun, um, you will find that something that is seemingly quite simple and easy sounding just to listen to is in fact very complex and detailed. You know, when you you know when you when you analyze it i think a lot of you will agree with me when i say that the brilliance in those early sounds can be directly attributed to alan wilder warning warning alan wilder fanboy alert warning warning the lead melodic riff from the iconic shake the disease is another classic example <laughs> If we look at the lead part, listen to that. It seems to have like a almost like a jazz guitar pluck to it, or like almost like like the beginning of a chord. It's hard to explain. But it's also got a sort of like a third lower, and that third lower it, it sounds to me like one of those. I, d I don't know what the sounds called. Help me, uh, guys. But they use it in hip hop and a lot of urban music, especially in the early '90s. So this is kind of a little bit ahead of its time. Um, you hear it's got like that urban kind of sound. Once again, brilliant layering. And you'll go down a rabbit hole just focusing on these sounds, believe me. Um, 
that is a, another example how they would program a whole sort of uh, sequence into one key. As simple as what that is to play, I mean, you're just hitting a key, but you do have to hit it exactly on the bar or on the beat, otherwise it'll, you know, it'll kind of echo, it'll, the sequence will move out of time with the track. You'll know what I mean if you're a, produ a producer. Um, and of course, we've also got that. And the this this uh, this sound once again it's 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 got like the it's got elements of a reed sound but there's also like oh I I I, I don't know um <laughs> I'm I'm gonna get criticised if I get it wrong but uh, let's try this one. That's got like a little bell sound, but it's also got like a ah, so it's dun, 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 dun. so the bell is an octave higher than the than the ah, 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 and it's got this ah, ah, ah sound, which is a synthesizer of some kind, and the bell kind of echoes on. Now I don't know if that is a bell from a D fifty or who knows, but fascinating. You also have these kind of sounds on uh, Shake the Disease, these samples. Now the that type of sound, it's a similar type of sound to uh, a sound in I've got to get to you first, do 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 do, it's got that. Of course it's not exactly the same sound, but there are, there are elements within the sound that you can hear in a question of time. Well, let's just get out of this rabbit hole right now. Jumping albums now to Violator. The lead sound to Halo is one of the many sounds that has really made me scratch my head. I mean, this is always this has always reminded me of like like a like a like this huge kind of steam like a, like a huge ocean liner. Ba, 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 ba. And of course, okay, this is uh, the sound taken uh, out of context. It's in isolation and it doesn't have any effect on it. It is dry, so it's. But once again, there is so much detail in that sound. The way it kind of bends. <laughs> Heaven only knows what the starting point of that sound was. And this is what is so intriguing about Depeche Mode's music. As I say, if we if we come back to like bands like Aha and stuff, who are, which are great bands, and I mean no disrespect in this comparison, it's just that when you listen to a lot of the keyboard parts, um, synthesizer parts in Aha's music, you go, okay, that is clearly a pad sound, and you can speculate what synthesizer it's from. But you can always kind of... Uh, associate the sound with a particular instrument. You can go, okay, that's a pad sound, you know, th th that's a piano sound, or that's like a bell sound, but not with Depeche Mode. It's always like, what the hell is that sound? What, you know, what is the starting point? You know, what did they start with and uh, in order to get to where they where they were with that sound? And there are so many examples. Check out the Violator album review series coming soon. That's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Jumping albums again to this time, Songs of Faith and Devotion. Uh, this is on the Martin Gore sound bank. A really, really creepy, uh, unsettling sound. I'll just play it to you and you'll recognize it. You recognize it? In your room, uh, I, I just think of the devotional, uh, the you know the live devotional show where Dave gone just before he you know stage dives into the crowd. It's got that. Oh. 
dum 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 it just sounds like this demonic kind of demonized evil kind of like monk entity that's uh, I, <laughs> fill in the blank you know what i mean it's like oh these sounds um also another set of sounds from martin gore's bank from in your room Now listen to this. You hear that? Okay, obviously it cuts out at the end because it's just a sample of what they've created. So listen to this. Uh, it's got like a uh, like so, sort of like a some kind of. Um, and you see, and there's like oh, it's like a choir kind of sound in the second note. So yeah. There's some kind of ethnic instrument there, some kind of Middle Eastern sound. And then here. There's there's like a there's like a like a organy sound, but with like a like a a, a choir sound there as well. On the third note. It's got like a sounds like a guitar going. Can you see how much complexity there is? And 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 when people criticize the Pesh mode, I want to shove this down their throat and just say, you know, unlike a lot of bands who just get in there and you know bash out a guitar or whatever, and they, you know, no disrespect to them, I think to the people who don't get the Pesh mode, when you just look how much attention goes into these sounds, onto the fourth note. Okay, let's just come onto that sequence again. So it's. Listen carefully. The first note. It's got this. It's got like some kind of ethnic instrument. The second note. It's got like a choir. Yeah, and the fourth note. I'm going down a rabbit hole right here. Was Songs of Faith and Devotion was just a, a mind-blowingly brilliant album uh, on every single level. Um, but we will address that when we get to it in the album review series before we go down another rabbit hole. <laughs> Jumping albums once again. Let's look at Black Celebration. Once again, many, many examples. But let's look at Fly on the Windscreen because uh, that is that song has always intrigued me. Um, I'm thinking of this part on the Alan Wilder sound bank. Just listen to the atmosphere by just holding down one note. Okay, it's got like a... Okay, I suppose that doesn't work because it's not meant to be played like that. So, okay, let's try it again. Um, hold down that note. So... Obviously, if you hold this note down, it's not meant to be sustained because he plays it like this. So you wouldn't sustain that note because if you do sustain that note, it, it doesn't actually make sense in content in the context of the melody. But listen to this. <laughs> Boom. It's got a good piano sample down there as well. And OVA's got like... So like brass trumpety type of sounds for the lead but anyway i just want to focus more in on this because 
because that sound always gave me the creeps uh, and, the, and the chills. And it's a bit like that um, monk kind of that, that sound from In Your Room. It really gives you, gives you the creeps. And it, it's quite funny. You think, why would you enjoy music that gives you the creeps? But then again, we don't explain Depeche Mode to people who just don't get it. Just listening to this, um, and once again, um, you will have your interpretation of how they did this, but that's definitely got some kind of guitar type harmonic or, or sound. So whether they recorded a just like one guitar note, probably Martin played a and then it's also got some kind of looping in the background there. But it's also it's also got like a kind of like a like a drony kind of oh, kind of sound. Oh, and I love the way, especially when you get yeah. Oh, just the way it echoes out like that. And then oh, this makes oh this makes my skin skin crawl, but it it's also strangely uplifting. It, Difficult to find the words to describe how I feel when I when when I when I hear these songs and, and this music. Um, just listen to the sustain on this last note, yeah. There is just so much attention to detail. I want to give you one more example now, and we're jumping to songs of faith and devotion again. Um, if we look at the the mercy in Hugh, um, something that intrigued me when I got hold of the samples was. And this is the Alan Wilder sound bank now. You'll recognize this. That is the You know what I need when my heart bleeds I suffer from greed, a longing to feed On the mercy in you And I, I was intrigued to see that the whole the, uh, By pushing one note you would actually get the chords played Can you hear? There's three notes played there. And then the first thing I thought was, well, you know, well, Alan is such a virtuoso, you know, he could quite easily play the chords. Why is a whole chord programmed into one key? Um, and that is something I will cover in excruciating detail when I get to the Songs of Faith, Faith and Devotion uh, album review series. Just know that for now, um, they would program uh, very often a whole sequence or... Um, a whole set of chords into one key. So when it gets to that, you know what I need when my heart bleeds. I suffer from greed, a longing to feed. On the something like that. Um, we'll go through that in a lot of detail in the uh, Songs of Faith and Devotion album review series. But interesting to see how a whole chord is programmed onto one key. On the mercy in you. Um, we go up to the top of the keyboard. We get the the outro, which is the. <laughs> that sound in itself is really sc creepy, skin crawl, but beautiful. Uh, it, 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 lost for words once again. seems to have some kind of, it's got some kind of pluck on the transient, like a pluck, you know, to help it cut through the mix. But it also has like choir sounds in it, and it also has like a, although you can hear the looping on the, it also has some kind of guitar ambience that is detuned. Wow. <laughs> wow. Anyway. Has this been a long video? It always is, and we don't care. Right, my friends, it is up to you now. Please leave your comments in the description below. Let me know what you find to be the most intriguing Depeche Mode sounds. There are no wrong answers here. Uh, if there is a sound that has always made you feel a certain way, uh, write it in the in, in the comments below and, and, and let us know. Uh, and, and if you're a producer, or even if you're not, if there is any sound 
within the Depeche Mode catalogue, any song, uh, let us know what sound uh, really resonated with you or is there a sound that you are really curious as to how it was made or is there a sound out there that is that you think you know how it was made or a anything i mean this th there are no wrong answers here this is such a uh, whenever i get into these videos and as i'm filming i'm just thinking wow i'm, I'm just it, yeah it, you expand you peel the layers and you go deeper and deeper and deeper anyway you get what i'm on about my friends, thank you so much as always. Um, if you've just joined the channel and I haven't scared you off, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. It really helps. Um, join the Vaughn George Facebook group. We have a Vaughn George Facebook group, which is a kind of like a springboard um, for this YouTube channel. And we use that Facebook group to discuss the videos in more detail. So it's kind of like a forum related to this channel. Um, I also have an Instagram page and a Twitter. And I also have a Patreon page if you would like to support the channel on Patreon and get some exclusive behind the scenes content. If you're a musician, a producer or an up and coming artist, please feel free to join the Vaughan George uh, Artist and Producers Forum also on Facebook. And in there you can share your music and join a like minded positive community. My friends, thank you so much as always. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I think I got quite intense there, but uh, you guys know me. I love what I do. Thank you so much and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Be safe and I'll see you then. Adios.